everybody. Welcome, welcome. As I uh, share a few announcements this morning to begin worship, I invite you to find those fellowship pads that are at the end of each row and sign in and uh, pass them along to your neighbor with a word of welcome. And I invite those of you who are worshiping with us online to also uh, share a greeting in the, in the chat so we know that you're here today too. Welcome to all of you. It's good to be together. A couple of announcements um, that I will share. Uh, we are um, underway with registration for Sunday school and confirmation right now. So on the back of your insert there is all the information you need to know about that, as well as high school Bible study. Um, so if you have not registered your child or youth for Sunday school or confirmation or high school Bible study, uh, take a look at that. and. Um, that really helps us to plan for the year if we know who's coming. Also, we are always uh, perpetually in need of uh, adults, caring adults who are willing to come and spend some time with our children, our youth on Sundays, and uh, serve as shepherds. And that's a wonderful opportunity to get to know these young people, to be a part of their faith journey. And the more we have, the more we can kind of kind of share the load and, and uh, spread that out so it ends up um, not being a burden on on anyone but a blessing for all of us so think about that and if you're interested in that opportunity I invite you to have a conversation with Donald Wade or myself about how you might serve it is uh, the Sunday that we take our mission support relief offering and today's offering benefits the Navajo Evangelical Lutheran Mission and I'll just remind you that there's an upcoming opportunity to uh, travel to the Navajo Mission a, a group from All Saints is planning a trip August 12th through 14th, uh, and today is the last Sunday to sign up for that in the, in the narthex. So if you are interested, please do sign up. Um, if you have questions, you can talk to Tim Gaffney for more information. Let's begin our service of worship by joining together in the confession and forgiveness as printed in your bulletin. I invite you to stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us make confession in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we have longed to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen.
with you. Let us pray together. Benevolent God, you are the source, the guide, and the goal of our lives. Teach us to love what is worth loving, to reject what is offensive to you, and to treasure what is precious in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Today's lesson for the eighth Sunday after Pentecost is from Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and 2. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher, utterly meaningless, everything is meaningless. I, the teacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. I applied my mind to study and to explore by wisdom all that is done under the heavens. What a heavy burden God has laid on mankind. I have seen all the things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless, a chasing after the wind. I hated all the things I had toiled for under the sun because I must leave them to one who comes after me. And who knows whether that person will be wise or foolish, yet they will have control over all the fruit of my toil into which I have poured my effort and skill under the sun. This too is meaningless. So my heart began to despair over all my toilsome labor under the sun. For a person may labor with wisdom, knowledge, and skill, and then must leave all to they own to another who has not toiled for it. This, too, is meaningless and a great misfortune. What do people get for all the toil and anxious striving with which they labor under the sun? All their day's work is grief and pain. Even at night, their minds do not rest. This, too, is meaningless. Word of God, word of life. And on that cheerful note, we're going to start a new school year, right? At this point, I would like to invite um, any students who are returning to school uh, to come forward for a special blessing. If you brought your backpack, you could bring it with you. If, you. if you didn't, we'll bless it from afar. It's okay. It'll still be blessed, but come on forward. Come on forward if you'd like. And the rest of you can find the Blessing of the Backpacks liturgy in your bulletin on the insert. I invite you to join with us. You guys can stand up. You can stand up today. We're doing a little different today. You can put your backpacks right here. Oh, yeah. Oh, you might have related to some parts of this scripture today about the work that keeps you awake at night and sometimes feel heavy, feels heavy on your back, and so we wanted to uh, send you back to school with a blessing today. So gather up, gather up close. You can gather up close. There we go. All right. We're going to pray. God of fresh starts and new beginnings, we bring ourselves and our backpacks to you. In our backpacks, we carry blank pages, sharpened pencils, and pointy crayons. And in our hearts, we carry big feelings, unanswered questions, and hopeful expectations. There are endless possibilities of what this new year might bring, of what we might learn, who we might meet, and who we might become. God, our friend, who is always with us, be with us through it all. Be with us as we ride the bus. Be with us as we walk. Be with us as we buckle seatbelts, zip up jackets, and tie shoes. However we get there, and whatever we wear, bless this journey into something new. For the grown-ups going back to school with us, God, be with them too. Thank you for our teachers, helpers, caregivers, and leaders, and for all they do to help us learn and grow. God, our friend who's full of wonder, Fill their hearts and bless their hands. We say a special prayer for parents, as the start of the new school year is always another leap of faith. Wrap them with your reassuring love as they entrust their children and trust in you. Bless them with peace and the promise you are right there with their child. 
whether heading to preschool or driving to college. Loving God, hold us and our prayers. We pray for health and wholeness, fun and growth, surprise and amazement for this school year ahead, knowing you will hold us all the way through. We thank you, God, and love you. Amen. Before you go, Donald has a special gift for yes, you. Yes, before you go, we have some uh, backpack tags that you can personalize and color yourself. So go ahead and grab one of these on your, on your way back to your seats. And God's blessings on a tremendous and fun school year ahead. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all. We'll join in our gospel verse, increase our faith, that's printed in your bulletin. Please rise. <laughs> Who forgot their backpack? <laughs> Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The Gospel of the Lord. Have a seat. This may come as a shock to some of you, but in Bible times, siblings were known to quarrel with one another. Can you believe it? <laughs> siblings were known to quarrel with each other in Bible times, and a common subject of sibling quarrel was inheritance had to do with the inheritance because what kind of assets you inherited from your parents usually in the form of land livestock had a lot to do with the kind of future you could expect for yourself and so we don't know the exact nature of this quarrel uh, but we do know that there's a brother probably a younger brother 
who has come before Jesus and has said, hey, either he didn't receive his portion of the inheritance, that's possible, or maybe he thinks that his older brother, who if he was the oldest would have received a double portion, maybe he thinks the older brother should be exceptionally gracious and share a little bit more of the wealth. We don't know exactly what the quarrel is. We don't know because Jesus doesn't really entertain it, right? He says, how is that any of my business? Just be aware that if you're trying to bring Jesus into your family drama, that is one possible response. <laughs> but then he goes on to speak to everyone, to speak to the crowd that's gathered there and, and his followers, and to say to them, be on guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. One's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. And then he says, have you heard the one about the guy who walked into a barn? <laughs> now, if you're looking at this, this man in the parable from strictly an investment perspective, you think, well, what's wrong here? What's wrong with saving? Isn't saving a good idea? Isn't putting a little bit away a, 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 just a practice of wise stewardship? What's the matter with that? But this fellow goes beyond, way beyond all of that, right? He's already got enough saved, and now he's, now he's taking it to the level of hoarding. I will store all my grain, listen to his superlatives, all my grain, all my goods, I will store it all up. And notice how his language is completely I-centered. We, we would never know that he's connected to any other human being on the planet. It's as if no one else exists. He thinks to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. I will do this. I will pull down my barns. I will store all my grain, my goods. I will say to my soul. In fact, he's having this little conversation with himself like he's a, like he's a trinity unto himself, right? Like he's the holy trinity of me, myself, and I. And he even speaks to himself in a deity-like fashion. He has kind of a pseudo-spiritual exchange, right? I will say to my soul, soul? You have ample, who says that? Do you, ever, do you ever talk to your soul that way? <laughs> soul? You have ample goods laid up for many years. Good job, soul, good, good for you. Now you can relax, eat, drink, and be merry. You deserve, you deserve to relax and take a break. Look at you, what a good job you've done. Forgetting that, he is, after all, not self-made, but is about to meet his maker. No thought about that. No thought about his, how his hoarding of grain might be driving up the price for the peasants who are his neighbors. No thought about that, about anybody else but himself. And it turns out the joke's on him. Punchline being, you can't take it with you. Ecclesiastes drives this point home with special passion through its narrator who calls himself the teacher. The teacher's back-to-school special reminds us in no uncertain terms that nothing we work for will last, that everything is ultimately mist, vapor. That's the word that's translated meaningless. It's hebel. It's literally like a, like a vapor that just kind of evaporates into nothing. Nothing will last. Everything is mist, vapor, something the next generation will have to redo anyway. And all the things we strive for, including wealth and wisdom and pleasure and recognition, they all end up being pretty well meaningless in the end. Nobody, to my knowledge, has turned Ecclesiastes into one of those cute little keepsake books to give to people at graduation. <laughs> you noticed? <laughs> oh, we don't do that because... <laughs> We don't care to be reminded about how much we find security in worldly things, our possessions and our assets, and not just the things, but also our endeavors, our achievements, our resumes, all of which will ultimately, we're reminded, fade into, into so much mist and a 15-minute eulogy. Maybe 20, it depends on which preacher you get. In our... <laughs> In our chasing, in our gathering, in our storing for our own short-term future, we imagine that we're doing our progeny a favor, but we scarcely think how much work we may be leaving them to do or undo in the wake of our self-centered acquisitiveness. Hmm. 
You know what, I, when I started my chaplaincy residency, I was thrilled because I was early on assigned to uh, the, the coronary care unit, the CCU. Um, and I loved it because um, these, these folks were mostly type A's <laughs> who had ended up in coronary care. And I, I found a kinship with them, with, the, with their sense of drivenness and their, and, you know, and their just, just their fullness of life purpose and their big goals and their desire to get out there and get things done and their restlessness with being stuck in the hospital. And I thought, yeah, these, I enjoy talking with those folks to, so much. You know, and I could just imagine what it must have felt like to have all of that cut short and have to be, have to be cruelly reminded of one's limitations and one's fragility and have to, have to stop and slow down and rethink life. But I, 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 I enjoyed them so much in the sense of, yeah, these are, these are my people. And then my, my own father had a heart attack and I, I realized these are my people. These are my people. This, boy, this, this, this striving and pushing and going after it so hard, this is part of my inheritance. What am I going to do about that? And I'm not saying that I am perfect by any means. I still have those tendencies. They're, they're a part of my DNA. But I realize as I, as I read this passage and as I'm reminded of these truths, that the real tragedy of this life of hoarding and chasing is that God gets what's left over. And it may be that we feel that all the things we're doing and chasing and striving for are serving God in some capacity, but it ends up that that God's will and God's voice get, get, get pushed aside and our internal dialogue takes over. And God only gets brought into the conversation as a last resort or when we find ourselves cut short by something in life that's changed that reminds us that we don't have the control that we thought we did. Hmm. But there's a flip side to this. There is hope in this passage. There's a flip, that, flip side that Jesus points to and hints at and, and that the, even the writer of Ecclesiastes will get to a little bit later on. But it's the idea that one can be rich toward God. This is how the passage ends. So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The alternative is that we can be rich toward God. And in that richness toward God, as we hear Jesus' words in this, in this Gospel of Luke, we realize that what it means is a, a release from worry over personal security, over how much I need to acquire or achieve before I can eat, drink, and be merry, or before I can feel myself a worthwhile member of the human race. Instead, there's this invitation to live in the kingdom of God now. Now. What is there to do, the writer of Ecclesiastes will say. What is there to do? Everything is meaningless. What is there to do but to eat, drink, and be merry and find pleasure in our toil? Let's do it now. And Jesus invites us to live in the assumption that there's enough to go around. Remember that from last week? We talked about the the Lord's Prayer. There's enough to go around and enough to share, like manna, like daily bread, like the fruit of today's labor. Nothing lasts. And yet for today there is enough, and in that we can rejoice. In that there is freedom. The celebration need not wait. The eternal banquet begins now. And if we're ready to embrace it, to open ourselves up to it, to participate in it, then that's not cause for fear, but for delight. I'm guessing since you're here, along with me, that you didn't win the Mega Millions either. (laughs) Good for you. We need to pray for those poor folks that did because most studies show that lottery winners aren't happier in the end, right? It doesn't make their lives better. And yet, we've won, my friends. For life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. We've won already because we have hope. 
We have the opportunity to live a life of immeasurable value. We are offered a life of undeferred joy, not dependent on circumstance. The gift of living in generous community. All that and an internal inheritance besides. And so we can afford We can't afford, even in the midst of all the troubles we hear and read about, all the busyness that drives us, all the pressure we're under, we can afford to be rich toward God. God has designed it that way. In our time, in our talent, in our treasure, in our prayer, in our worship, in our witness, in our grace, in our compassion, in our forgiveness, in our kindness, in our service, in our generosity, let it be our goal as this new season approaches to apply ourselves to this lesson. For the sake of Jesus and his kingdom, O oh Lord, teach us how to be rich toward you. Amen. We'll join in hymn number 583. Please rise. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moment and my days let them flow in ceaseless praise take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee take my life that I may be consecrated Lord to thee take my moments and Let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. People of God, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. Please be seated. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. O oh God, you are wholeness. Where there is division in your church, bring reconciliation and healing. Guide the work of theologians, Sunday school teachers, seminary professors, and all who provide instruction for the building of your church. Hear us, O God. Your grace o God, you are the source of all life. Where creation cries out in distress, bring relief and renewal. Bless farmers, ranchers, distributors, and all who provide our food. Nourish the land and all its inhabitants. Hear us, O God. Your grace. O oh God, you are wisdom. Where nations and communities yearn for peace, bring justice. Strengthen those who toil for the welfare of others and for the healing of the nations. Hear us, O oh God. Your grace O oh God, you are life. Where your people are overwhelmed with the busyness of life, bring encouragement. Accompany all who experience emotional, mental, or physical distress. Bless those in need of healing and strength. In particular, Pastor Dan Hager, Rich Easton, Blythe Heffelfinger, Dennis Haugen, Johnny Edwards, Jim and Marita Fink, George Humphrey, and Don Noller. Renew us at the table of mercy. Hear us, O God. Your grace O God, you are our treasure. Where scarcity and anxiety pervade your church, bring abundance and vitality. Guide the work of church councils and committees and give them clarity for the work of ministry in this place. Bless in particular our partnership with the Navajo Evangelical Lutheran Mission. Hear us, O God. O God, you are resurrection. We give you thanks for the homecoming of Philip Livingood, and we pray for his ongoing healing. We thank you for the dedication of prayer warriors, along with all your saints, who inspire us by their example of faithful living to set our minds on things above and to be rich in love toward you. Hear us, O God. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with your neighbors in worship.
We take time to offer our richness towards God as an act of worship in the receiving of our morning offering. After the plate has passed your pew, if you have a, a special offering to share with the Navajo Evangelical Lutheran Mission, you're invited to bring that forward and place it in the stained glass uh, boxes here at the front. We'll join in hymn 708 as the offering is received. Seven twenty one, please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who by his death on the cross and glorious resurrection broke the bonds of sin and death and gave life to all creation. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated.
538, the Lord now sends us forth.
invite you to stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may, know, all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now, my friends, the God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Let's sing together hymn number 825, You Servants of God. Go in peace, love your neighbor. Thanks be to God.